I've been flying as a fixed wing medevac pilot in the Rockwell Turbo Commander for about three years now and have always wanted to make a video documenting a day in the life of pilots like me. Well, here it is, finally. The video you are about to watch will give you a glimpse into the life of a fixed wing medevac pilot flying single pilot IFR and VFR under part 135. For those contemplating this career field, hopefully this video will help you make an informed decision. For those just curious about what we do, I think you'll find this video enjoyable. So without further ado, here is a day in the life of a medevac pilot. So let's start with the work schedule first. It's not sexy and it's not exciting, but it's a big part of the job. Not all medevac jobs will have the schedule I'm about to explain, but this one is fairly first typical. First week of October will be a day shift. And that will run from October 1st all the way till 6.30 and it's 12 hours. So day shift, I'm on from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m and then I'm on my own time until 6.30 a.m. the next day. So on the 7th, I'm at home on vacation, seven days off, until I go back on night shift on the 15th. I gotta be back in Safford by 6.30 p.m. and I'm gonna work all the way until 6.30 a.m. on the 22nd. With the schedule worked out, it's now time to hit the road for a seven-day shift. I live in Phoenix, but my base is in Safford, Arizona, three and a half hours drive to the east. On Tuesday morning, a little after 3 a.m., I start the long drive to my base. Safford is located in the southeastern portion of Arizona, at the foot of Mount Graham, the second tallest peak in the state. The town of Safford, population 9,000, can be considered remote. The town roots go back to the 1800s and much of that old western town charm still exists. Farming and mining are the staples of Safford. Copper and cotton reign supreme. Mount Graham Regional Medical Center provides medical support for the region. The town has had an airfield since the earliest days of aviation and aviation is deeply intertwined in its history. Today the current airport is located 10 miles north of town as our first destination upon arrival in Safford. The first order of business upon arrival at base is to thoroughly pre-flight the aircraft and become familiar with changes in the aircraft's maintenance status and any maintenance that was performed during the week I was off. My company operates the Rockwell Turbo Commander. Other medevac companies operate twin-engine King Airs and single-engine Pilatus PC-12s. I prefer the Commander. The Garrett engines, delivering over 700 shaft horsepower aside, are much more powerful than the King Airs. 
and of course the Commander has two engines, which beats a single engine Pilatus any day. The plane's max ramp weight is 10,300 pounds, requiring only a pilot to hold a multi-engine certificate in order to operate. Unlike the Pratt & Whitney PT-6, the Garrett TP-330 is a geared turboprop, which means power is instantaneous upon application. The Turbo Commander will fly and climb without hesitation on just one engine, making it a safe and reliable platform for flying single pilot IMC at night over mountainous terrain. First thing we need to do is see what's happened to the airplane maintenance-wise. Since I've been gone, fire extinguisher inspection. And I'm just looking at different maintenance to see what maintenance has transpired since I've been um, off duty for the last seven days. And if there's any new entries, then I'm gonna make particular note of those, making sure the airplane is not grounded My company operates under an FAA-approved electronic flight bag program. This approval allows us to carry traditional paper documents such as the op specs, GOM, minimum equipment list, aircraft manuals, approach plates, and en route charts in electronic format, saving many pounds in weight and streamlining updates. We use ForeFlight running on an iPad as our EFB platform. The days of updating the JEP chart binders weekly has slipped into aviation history at least for this company. In addition to ForeFlight, we use a form program to handle all of our flight paperwork requirements. This includes electronic versions of the weight and balance calculations, risk assessments, and flight cards, which document block times, flight times, duty times, and other maintenance and customer billing metrics. First thing I'm gonna do is see how much fuel I have on board. which is what we normally carry. The plane burns about 600 pounds an hour. With the plane pre-flight done, it's time to head to the crew house and unpack for my week's stay. This is where I will spend the majority of my week waiting for the call to go fly. Located about six miles from the airport, the crew house is less than a 10 minute drive door to door. Go take a look inside. I'll give you the nickel tour. So this is a hundred year old farmhouse that's been renovated. And it's got everything we need. It's got a nice kitchen. Microwave, oven, a little place to eat your lunch, dinner, 
This is our living room. Nice and sunny. We got cable, we got internet. We even got an exercise bike. Everything we need to pass the time. Only two of us are using the crew house. So there's two bedrooms. Pretty large. Notice the black curtains, so when you're on night shift, you can sleep without having the sun wake you up. Cable TV. We got an office with a computer so we can do our pre-flight planning and uh, play computer games, surf the internet, whatever we need to do. Bathroom, running water, shower, toilet, everything you need to be comfortable. Laundry room, washer and dryer, hot water. So all the basics, everything you need. This is where you're going to spend seven days all by yourself. Now let's take a look at the typical flight profiles that I fly from Safford. Now my particular company, again, we're going from Safford, it's the only town we service, going into Tucson, or going into Phoenix. Those flights are about 30, 35 minutes, give or take. And the distances are quite short. 80 nautical miles to uh, Tucson. And Phoenix, our longest leg, 125 miles. So they're all cross country, but they're, they're short hops up and down. Usually we don't go higher than 12,500 feet. So the time we go to Phoenix, we go into Phoenix Sky Harbor, the primary Class B airport. Um, however, there are times when we'll go to the reliever airports. We've been to Phoenix Mesa Gateway, Chandler, Scottsdale, Deer Valley, Glendale, over on the uh, west side. So we go, we go to all the reliever airports in the valley. Tucson, there's not a whole lot of choices. Tucson International, Class C airport. And then I guess if, uh, never had to do this, but if the weather was really bad there, or there was a thunderstorm, we could go to Ryan or Marana off to the, uh, to the west side. Each day prior to the start of my shift, I will get familiar with weather conditions for the day and its potential impact on flight operations. One of my favorite weather resources is the National Weather Service's Aviation Weather Center website. You can see the outlook for this particular week is blue skies and sunshine. Excellent fall weather for stress-free flying. But if you think Arizona weather is always like this, you would be dead wrong. We get our share of challenging weather conditions, including fog, low visibility, Believe it or not, snow, gusty winds, sometimes as high as 35 knots, dust storms, known as haboobs, and dangerous air mass thunderstorms. One of the last pre-planning things I will do is check NOTAMs and TFRs. For this, I like to use ForeFlight. Um, and the main thing I'm doing here is checking the uh, NOTAMs for my home airport as well as uh, any um, of the major airports that I'll probably be going to. So I'll just check those and make sure um, nothing's changed and that I'm aware of the NOTAMs. So I'm that much further ahead when I get the phone call to go to one of these places. So now we just wait for the call. It could be hours, it could be days, but eventually the call will come. You pass the hours however you like. Here's just a few examples of how I pass mine. Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
There's the call. Here we go. What's up, Matt? Got a flight for you, sir. Awesome. All right. 148 pounds to Tucson, no rider. All right. Got it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. That's Bye. it. All right. We got our flight. It's time to go to work. System test okay. Hot, not available. Sapper traffic air back two on the packing right lift will be to uh, Sapper. Uh, to the hospital, Sapper. Sapper traffic, uh, Medvac 7 Hotel Juliet's taxi from the ramp 1 2, sir. After traffic, Medvac 7 Hotel Julia will be taking off runway 12. We'll be wide right down wind departure to the west side.
traffic, met back, 7 Hotel Juliet, it's 3 to the uh, southwest, 7,600, climbing, 12,500, southwestbound, Tucson, direct. Tucson, report information, echoes, 0453, Zulu observation, wind 1604, weather, but 127 Hotel Juliet, Tucson approach, good evening, squawk 0434. Medivac 7 Hotel Juliet, radar contact, would you uh, like runway 2 on this evening? Affirmative, sir. 7 Hotel Juliet. Medivac 7 Hotel Juliet, descend straight in runway 21, no restriction over DM. Hey, straight in for 21, 7 Hotel Juliet. Medivac 127 Hotel Juliet, Tucson Terra, 1104, runway 21, clear to land. Clear to land, 21, we'll be parking at Atlantic, 7 Hotel Juliet. Okay. So the crew is gone, the only thing we have to do now is provide our fuel order to the FBO. Fairly simple for this flight leg. It's 300 pounds to get to Tucson, it takes 300 pounds to get back. So we need 600 pounds of fuel. An easy way to convert fuel uh, pounds into gallons is to just take uh, the 60, take half of that, that's uh, 30, add 60 and 30. That's 90, so we need 90 gallons of fuel. So, real simple, simple pilot math there. It's a Scotty lineman extraordinaire, and my best friend. <laughs> Heading into the FBO, get the crew car, and change into my Uber hat now and go pick up the crew, the med crew from the uh, hospital, which is about 25 minute drive. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Bye. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, we're headed to the crew car. Atlantic has nice crew cars. Unlike some of the beaters, poopies I've seen. All right, 20 minutes later, we have arrived. Tucson Medical Center, the biggest hospital in Tucson, and where we go 85% of the time. So the crew came here by Ambo, but I got.
got to pick them up and take them back because the AMBO charges if they take the crew back to the airport. Dropped off, impatient, waiting on me. One two five point one squawk four three five five. Commander one two seven Hotel Chile. Tucson Ground, Turbo Commander 127 Hotel Julia Atlantic, ready to taxi via far to Sapper. Turbo Commander 127 Hotel Julia, Tucson Ground, runway 11 left, taxi via Delta. 11 left via Delta, Commander 127 Hotel Julia. Tucson Tower, Commander 127 Hotel Julia, hold short, 11 left at Delta, ready for departure. Turbo Commander 127 Hotel Julia, Tucson Tower, turn left to Lincoln Fairgrounds, then on course, wind calm, runway 11 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, all on left, direct fairgrounds on course, 127 hotel. Clear for takeoff, maintain altitude. 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 Clear So there you have it, a day in the life of a medevac pilot. Ironically, I'm filming the conclusion of this video at the conclusion of my three-year time as a medevac pilot. Next week, I start a new adventure as a charter pilot flying the Beach Premier Jet. I thoroughly enjoyed my time flying the Turbo Commander. I grew tremendously as a pilot in the past three years and was very fortunate to fill the experience bucket before the luck bucket ran out. Thank you again for watching. Special thank you to my subscribers. If you have any questions about this video, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them.